Faculty of Architecture Alumni Association and SET Archives. The exhibition showcases the selected works and design process of architect Gemini Mehta, evolved over more than 40 years of his teaching and practice. Professor Jaimini Mehta is a practicing architect and an academician based in Baroda. He studied architecture at MS University of Baroda and the University of Pennsylvania in the Louis Kahn studio. He went on to work in the offices of Louis Kahn and Mitchell Gurdjieff Associates in Philadelphia. Returning back to India in 1975, he set up his own practice and taught at a number of Indian as well as American universities. He was an adjunct professor at the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute at Troy, New York, and at SEP University in Ahmedabad, India. He also worked as head of the schools of architecture at Baroda and Goa. At present, he is the honorary director of Baroda-based Center for the Study of Urbanism and Architecture, which he instituted in 2006. He contributes regularly in the ongoing discourse on architecture through articles in Indian as well as international journals. Among his many writings are the books Louis I. Kahn, Architect, co-authored with Romaldo Giorgova and published in 1975, Rethinking Modernity Towards Post-Rational Architecture and Embodied Vision, Interpreting the Architecture of Fatehpur Sikri, published in 2011, and 2014, respectively. His forthcoming book, Critiquing the Modern in Architecture, is scheduled to be published in 2017 by Rutledge, New York, and London. We are all very grateful to him for sharing his work and thoughts with us through this exhibition titled The Concern Making. May I request our distinguished guests, along with the co hosts of today's event, to open the event with the lighting of the lamp. May I request uh, Professor Jamini Mehta, Rahul Mehrotra, Gurpreet Singh, Khushru Kalyanwala, and Dr. Bimal Patel all to light the lamp. request Gurpreet Singh Aroda, Chairman of the Board of Faculty of Architecture Alumni Association to deliver his opening remarks. Gurpreet Singh Aroda. Welcome, my seniors and all my friends here. As some of you may know that the primary purpose of our FAAA is to support and promote the interests of the Faculty of Architecture, FSEP, in its endeavor to continue and maintain itself as a world standard of academic excellence in architecture. Our mission of FAAA is to basically promote and encourage lifelong learning and the pursuit of knowledge. It's also a bridge between the old and the new and the advantages of cross-pollination that go along with it. Now, to implement this vision at the FAAA, we have undertaken a lot of activities. And these activities primarily are lecture series. We are in our 25th lecture now. And about 13 talks that we've had, which have been very engrossing and been very encouraging. The response has been very good. We also welcome the new students at the school. And this is our third year that uh, we've been welcoming students. We've had some very powerful multi presentations We've had three editions of multi-culti uh, presentations, you know. Then we also have a FAAA newsletter, which is uh, accessible to about, we have about 3,000 viewers each week, which is not a mean uh, achievement, and it's been regularly coming out and it's been very engrossing. Then we also have annual get-togethers in various centers, that's Delhi and Bangalore, of course, and you know. We've just recently, uh, finished uh, inter-school quiz 
where we had 15 teams out of which three teams were from SEPT and 12 teams from other schools of Gujarat, which I think as a first inter-school quiz was a great initiative. And the enthusiasm of the participating teams was so large despite their being having a, a NASA at Surat school, you know. Otherwise, we would have had about 25 teams which had shown interest in the quiz. Then we just yesterday concluded the Purla Varki Design Forum. Now with the Purla Varki Design Forum, we've been, uh, you know, engaging with the students and helping them put this together. And uh, our engagement with the students uh, is going to get deeper and we're going to bring in a degree of uh, refinement in our presentations, which will actually make it a national level event very soon, which it already is. We narrowly missed getting Toyo to the Japanese architect who is currently visiting India for our Purnavati design forum because uh, of our certain commitments which I think we contacted him a little late in the day. So as a part of these activities, these initiatives have taken well. We are looking at uh, FAAA tours, you know, to, uh, for like-minded architects, uh, students and, uh, you know, architects. Wherein we are looking at going to Kerala, Bhutan, Sri Lanka with our guided uh, uh, participants. We are also looking at FAAA workshops which are primarily of interest to professionals and for off-site learning. As a part of our FAAA exhibitions, now we are in our third exhibition here. The first one being by Professor uh, Miki Desai, then uh, Professor Gurdjieff Sudan's work and now Germany Mehta work here. We are very proud to talk of Germany uh, Mehta as an exemplary teacher to many of us here, you know. And I have had the privilege of uh, working with Germany Saab on a few competitions and, you know, the passion that he brings about in his work through, and his teaching is phenomenal. You know, when knowing Germany Saab, I wish to share a few small anecdotes here. You know, when he went for his uh, studies to the U.S. in 65, it's very interesting to know how he was interviewed. He had applied to the Tata Trust for a scholarship. Now, he got a first-class train ticket from Baroda to Bombay. The gentleman who was traveling, who was his companion in the same coupe, happened to be one of the interviewers for him. So, you know, these were the rigors of uh, stuff that one had to go through, even for a, you know, uh, educational, uh, uh, you know, funding and things like that. So it's quite interesting. And then, you know, we've had some book launches which he did. The last one I remember in Delhi, which was on Fatehpur Sikri, where we, you know, very nice, very engrossing talk and all that. When we came out, three of us got together and we said, "Yeah, ab Germany sahab ki baat samajani shuru hui hai hamare ko." Prior to that, Professor Mehta. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the same passion with his work and theory continues. So, this exhibition is actually a passion of his work, and you know, what he, his projects are deeply thought out and the concerns which are why, you know, not mere formulations and you know, resolutions. I would urge the young students here that I see today to not only look at the drawings and the presentations, but also to see the accompanying notes that present you know, that are there with the exhibition to go through them. So with these words and, you know, Professor Mehta, I would urge, uh, you know, Dr. Bimal Patel to come over and take on. And I thank Sept and the archives for this. So thank you. Welcome, everybody. And I have lots of people to thank. To start with, Germany Mehta. Uh, I'm forever explaining how so and so was my teacher at this time and that time. That's half my job these days. Germany Mehta taught, uh, he had freshly arrived from the US, I think, when we had joined school in 78. And he was my teacher in uh, the third year or the fourth year. Fourth year. So when, when did you come to? 76. So he was sort of this newly arrived, very enthusiastic American intellectual professor who had come here, and 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 um, I, I I learned with him in the fourth year. Um, he brought a sort of passion to talking about architecture. That was very important to 
making, convincing all the architecture schools that there's nothing more important than architecture in the world. That's the only important thing. And I think that creating that sort of a, a, a passion is, uh, is, is a very important task of any school. Of course, uh, those who are not architects, my daughter, for example, just can't understand why my son thinks architecture is the most important thing in the world. But that passion is half the education. And Jaimini, you were, you were great at that. It's, uh, it's terrific to have you here uh, just now and to hold this exhibition. So that's number one. Second, uh, Jaimini Rai is going to give all his work, all his drawings and, and notes, etc., uh, to SEPT archives. And for that, I'm really very thankful. We've set up this institution in the hope that slowly we will build up a collection of, uh, of works from different architects. And uh, the, the faith you put in the archives and your decision to, to, to give your work to the archives is extremely important. I, I just, you know, I just feel, imagine if this had been done 30 years ago or 40 years ago, we would have a, a repository now of, of works from so many people and so many so well here's a start and here we are going on and thank you very much for choosing to put your work here this is a great honor and this is very important for us also i want to thank FAAA and uh, archives i mean getting kushru and rutri to work together is uh, you see it's uh, it's it's it's, 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 a it's a great combination and uh, a lot of my job really at this point of time is to get various people except to well all pull in the same direction and to all work. There are lots of people passionately working to make things happen. Um, I mean there's a whole bunch of people working with FAAA of course. Uh, some of you stalwarts are here. Um, Kushu and Ishita are working on the archives. Uh, there's a uh, bunch of people running the summer winter school, there are other people running the faculty, somebody else going. And, and it's, 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 it's terrific to see the energy that everybody brings to set. And uh, it's even better when I see people working cooperatively together because that's really uh, a challenge often in an institution. And that's terrific. Uh, so thank you very much for doing this. Uh, I don't need to introduce Rahul. Um, all of you know he's a set talent. It's, it's, it's lovely to be amongst alums working and, and doing so. He's a talent. He's an extremely well known architect. We are all very, very proud of having him uh, um, as uh, a set talent. Uh, and he's doing our new library. I'm delighted that he's here uh, to talk about uh, Jaimini Vai's. Uh, work and uh, let's get on with it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bimal. Uh, it's a great honor to be here, actually. Thank you all for being here. Thanks to Gemini who, for asking me to do this. I was really, very touched. And he said he must have a student say something and reflect about the exhibition. And I, I, you know, I was overwhelmed. Uh, but of course, uh, it was something that I couldn't sort of uh, uh, refuse to do. And I, I'm delighted and honored, as I said, to do this. I had the fortune of looking at the exhibition uh, before this event. So I, I don't want to kind of repeat things that have been said there, some of which are very, very lucid, uh, very clear, uh, and a wonderful combination of illustrative material, but words used and crafted in a way that they build on a narrative uh, and I think for me what struck me about the exhibition and I think you all will all enjoy is there's a kind of lucid narrative that goes through the entire exhibition, a set of big ideas, ideas, buildings as ideas but then each project I was saying to Gemini is like it's like Alice in Wonderland because each one of them had little sketches, their complex geometries that collide, their models, their, 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 their exploratory sketches and it sort of each one engages you in a different way and I think it's a wonderful format uh, as an exploration but also as a generous uh, gesture of sharing ideas. And, and you know one of the things that gets highlighted in the exhibition is the notion uh, 
that what Jemni Mehta, Professor Jemni Mehta, is interested in is making places. The building is not an autonomous object, but something that, uh, that, uh, that, that emerges out of a collision of forces that come both from the context, the physical context that he's sort of operating in, but also a very deep un understanding of the cultural context in which that artifact is beginning to be given life. And in many ways, in some, in, in, um, in many ways, I think the geometries that he employs uh, retrospectively, I kind of see as a struggle between this sort of set of reconciliations and this awareness about the biggest, bigger context. And that's why he uses the word place, uh, making places, uh, and not the autonomous object of the architecture. And I was saying to him, and I'm going to suggest to Kushru, who is in charge of this archive, it, that statement there almost defines the mission of the archive. And like you have this board for posters, that should be the mission of the archives, uh, which in a sense uh, defines also what you're doing in, you know, in, in ways that you're sort of collecting it. So I'm going to just use these few minutes I have to reflect both on a personal note, uh, but also what I sort of saw in the exhibition. And uh, for me, Germany has been someone who uh, has always sort of, uh, at least for us as students, um, you know, uh, inspired us with many different fragments that seem sometimes like they couldn't be reconciled uh, and therefore they made us think, they jostled us to think. And so I kind of made a series of notes here and in the same way I'm going to share fragments with you. So excuse me if they're not sort of a cohesive written out uh, lecture. I want to start with, uh, in reflection, uh, with uh, you know the fact that Germany Mehta started his practice in 1976, which is the year that I started studying architecture here. Uh, Bimal was 78 uh, two years later, uh, and uh, Professor Mehta started his practice, but also started teaching. Uh, it was a very interesting moment at SEP because it was also the first year uh, that the curriculum changed into a five-year program from a six-year program. Uh, and so there were suddenly, uh, you know, uh, double classes because people were overlapping. But it was also a very important moment that has become very clear in reflection, which was that uh, there were many changes happening in the school, a school that was established by Professor Doshi, uh, which had a very, very clear pedagogical agenda. It had a very pure, uh, a very clear methodology uh, in terms of its pedagogy, etc. Uh, was beginning to go through a transformation. Uh, Hasmuk Patel had just taken over as the dean of the school at that point. And in reflection, if anything, I can kind of uh, say that it was a moment of 76, 77, 78, uh, where the sort of landscape, the intellectual landscape uh, at SEP became highly pluralistic. And for me, Germany Mehta truly was Leo Pereira, Gemini Mehta, there were many, many practitioners who were beginning to teach us who suddenly bought in completely different directions. You know, in a more kind of light note, uh, you know, the thesis projects always reflected the place. Uh, and we always sort of used to jokingly in the canteen talk about how till the moment every thesis project was almost resonated the section of the SEPT building in terms of proportion, scale, the section, etc. And really it, by 77, 78, 79, when the first batches that Germany Mehta was teaching and many other professors here, Leo Pereira is one I can think of right at the top of my head, there was a completely different sensibility uh, that the students were beginning to get excited about. And what Germany Menta, now that we are sort of celebrating this exhibition, I must focus on, is he bought uh, a freshness at that point from the United States. We were introduced to characters like Peter Eisenman, which hadn't been heard about in the school because there was a very particular tradition that extended the Kanyan and the Corbusian tradition. Aldo Van Eyck was like really going out far right. But suddenly we got from left flank the New York Five, uh, the kinds of things that he had learned from Romaldo Jagola, completely different ways of engaging with architecture uh, and a different sensibility of material, of form, of geometry. And I would say that this came as a breath of fresh air at that, at that point and really was the turning point in defining what I would call the plural directions that the school began uh, to take. And so I think this, for me, represented uh, a very important moment uh, in, in what we were doing. To jump to his project, some of which you'll see in the exhibition, 
Uh, I mean, the whole idea of, and these are very rare because a lot of us haven't seen his very personalized notes of using drawing as a tool to think, uh, the sketches that you'd see in here, very beautiful sketches, but also models as a mode of exploration. These are not models that are built after the, after the act to fetishize what has been achieved, but rather they are models which actually, actually explore the volumetric possibilities, etc. And you know, as a student at that time, the three projects I was sharing with Gemini Mehta uh, that, that really influenced us in a sense was the Surat, uh, the, uh, the club in Surat, which he did from 82, 83, the Vasarya House of 1982, and the Atal Kutir in Udaipur of 1982 also. Uh, we were, you know, towards our final years, and so therefore we were absorbing much more. But these were three projects where he kind of demonstrated to us in real terms, because he was also a teacher, of the different modes of organizing a building. I mean, the idea of of the facade as a mask or a skin which was separated and articulated in a particular way. Within another pedagogical framework and architectural kind of attitude, uh, that was sacrilege. But here he demonstrated the potentials and the possibilities and the kinds of tensions that you could create spatially, which were totally elating for all of us, liberating in some ways. Uh, but also how the duality of this materiality, that the mask is made in exposed brickwork, whereas the volume are these beautiful pristine uh, plastered surfaces. And so these were all actually at that time very, very new directions, which of course with postmodernism and all of that later got completely heavy and liberated beyond liberation in a sense but here this was a demonstration of those possibilities with a kind of rigor uh, which I think a lot of us imbibe uh, in, 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 in very sort of uh, deep ways the tension the materiality the adjoining relationships the reconciliation of disparate geometries and disparate things uh, and I think that really opened up a fantastic directions in that sense uh, Gemini Mehta was a, 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 a bridge professor, a bridge practitioner uh, between a generation uh, that had I, that had actually worked directly with what you might call the masters, Corbusier, Louis Kahn, uh, and and the present generation. Uh, but Gemini Mehta sort of came a step later, a decade or two after those sort of masters. Uh, he worked with Jagola, who was a completely different kind of architect. But then he engaged for us with the masters through criticism, through reflection, his book on Louis Kahn. It was a different relationship that he established in our minds in the ways we could read these masters. It wasn't a first-hand experiential kind of passing on that we heard from, say, Doshi or from Charles Correa or from that generation, but one that was actually had the ability uh, to understand that previous generation, but also enough distance uh, to reflect about it in critical ways. And I think as a student, to see these kinds of new relationships and forming uh, these new abilities to reflect back and forth as a practitioner and an academic uh, was uh, a great education and one that one will always sort of uh, uh, be uh, grateful for. I mean, there are a couple of things that one uh, remembers uh, in a kind of different light, and one of my most memorable moments uh, with Gemini uh, at the School of Architecture is when he came back from Peru, from Machu Picchu, uh, and with great excitement, he did this marathon lecture showing us slides about Machu Picchu. And you know, I have goosebumps as I talk about it, I share that with you. But it was one of the most mind-boggling lectures to date that I have seen. And I remember I went to Machu Picchu, I was very lucky to go last year, and I dropped him an email to say I'm going off there and remember your lecture because it, it, it took the most ancient site sitting on the most mind-boggling topography. But what he prepared us for was not only its historicity and the interpretive kind of values that he shared with us, but the kind of narratives that you could sort of understand architecture by, how do you move through the space, uh, what it means, what it means in section, what it means uh, as material experience, for example. And taking that really ancient site, the form of which we can only speculate about, and to date no one has come up with a firm proposition of what it might have been or looked like. I mean, there are many theories. It was, it was something that has, I must admit, stayed with me, and it's hard for me to even speak further about it because it is kind of an emotional 
um, uh, learning by osmosis by just sort of uh, listening uh, and you know understanding. And another one that I sort of uh, have often reflected and thought about, uh, and these are all to also reflect his own personality and his way of looking at things, is uh, you'll notice that in one of the sheets here in the exhibition for the Udaipur, the Atal Kutir House of 1982, you'll see hand-drawn pencil working drawings which he has put in the display. And he shared with me these were made by Raj Mohan Shetty, who was a colleague a few years senior to us. And they are working drawings of stone slabs in different forms uh, and how they might actually be constructed and connected. Now, it's, it's fascinating because usually to build a balcony, traditional balcony, of course, with some interpretations in stone, is a kind of oral protocol where you work with craftsmen, some stencils are made and it's put together because these traditions are very deep. And here he was in 82 trying to codify that in a way that it would not only have a contemporary slant, but it would find its way into the contemporary sort of realization and imagination of architecture. The reason I share this is because, you know, in, at SEP, as students, and on a more personal note, we had this semester which we all <coughs> dreaded, which was after third year, which was called the working drawing semester. And we had a professor, Gajar, who used to teach it. Uh, and uh, it was, you know, I mean, people were frightened to be in that semester because it was working 24 hours. There were these deadly drawings you had to do. And because there were two batches in the five year, six year program, we, were, we had Gemini Metta for working drawings. And uh, it was first we thought, my God, are we going to theorize working drawings? How are we going to do working drawings? And, you know, it was actually quite mind boggling. And when I saw these working drawings for stone slabs to make a balcony, I was reminded it was, it was a very memorable uh, uh, semester. We did the Ritz Hotel site, which at that point people were speculating might be developed. And, you know, we spent hours with Gemini Mehta discussing what our attitude to the residue in the flooring should be. And that, it, it, you know, no one ever thought of residues like that. I mean, residues were something that happened because your stone slabs had a little piece left. But it was amazing that we actually did working drawings while theorizing some of this or becoming conscious of how these attitudes to junctions, to things. So it was embodied with design attitudes completely, but also the rigor of working drawings. And when I saw those drawings that he's put up there, that all came back to me. Uh, and in retrospect, it was one of my most educative uh, semesters because one actually saw how you could realize buildings without compromising their design integrity, even if you had to make working drawings. Because usually the advice we were given by seniors before we went into that semester was do a very simple design because you have to make working drawings of it. <laughs> so the more complicated, if you put a curve, you had it, you know. But with Gemini Mehta, again, we were liberated because we were taught how all of that should be translated. And it only empowers you in the future to be more confident about not worrying about how you would actually communicate uh, your intentions. And so these were some things that as I was going through the exhibition, I was sort of, uh, I was reminded about. And I think lastly, just to sort of end uh, on this note, uh, I think, and Bimal said this, I think if there's anybody with him who sort of fuses this message that architecture is serious business, it's Gemini Mehta. I mean, everything about it is... Uh, it's, it's an endeavor of immense seriousness, and there's, there's, there's no compromise on that front. It's uncompromising, it's rigorous, all the way from its conception to the words that you use to describe it, to the mode of representation you use to depict it. You'll see drawings of completely different characters, which in his view are appropriate for the expression of that particular uh, project. And, Again, on a personal note, you know, recently as we were doing the SEPT library, uh, I got a five-page note from Germany Mehta. We got many inputs from many people. When you design a building on an architecture college, everyone and his dog has an opinion <laughs> about what should happen. And we've got, we've got lots of sort of chatter. But Germany Mehta was the only one who produced a five. It was a paper. It was an essay, a very productive one. You could, on the face of it, read it as criticism. But 
you know, a teacher can't do that to a student. And so it was full of seriousness. It was to provoke new directions. It was to remind us that architecture is serious business and that there are many areas to explore which we might forget to explore in a moment of haste. Uh, and it was something that uh, one appreciated. And so it is this criticality, it is this rigor, uh, and it is this immense seri seriousness in the production and the engagement with architecture that characterizes Gemini Mehta. And it, it's incredibly well embodied in the show that you're about to see. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Nairotra. May I request uh, Ishita from SEPT Archives to uh, thank Rahul Nehrutra with the token of appreciation. <laughs> May I request Kushru Kalyanwala, Director of SEPT Archives, to felicitate Professor Jamini Mehta for bringing this exhibition and for uh, giving for archiving his work at the SEPT Archives. There is a small story to this, and that is that uh, some of the stuff that we do in the archives, we get to know these small nuggets of things later on as we work on stuff. And we recently got to know that the Watson Building Related Study Program was actually carried out by Jeremy Mehta. So we thought that uh, an etching of that building would be a good thing to give to him. May I now request Kushu Kadanwala to say a few words about SEPTA guys. Thanks, Shiro. Good evening, everybody. Um, the first point that I was given was to talk about the missions of SEPTA archives. But Gemini and Rahul have made it very easy because Gemini's written the piece and Rahul has said you might as well make this the mission of the SEPT archive. So my mission is whatever is, is written out here. Rahul, thanks for that, okay? Uh, Gemini, um, really lovely to have you here on this occasion. Um, it's even more wonderful that you've promised your work to this archives. Uh, this can only happen in SEPT where uh, all of us have been his students, so have I. Uh, they've all given you the serious aspect of Germany. But let me tell you, he can also party well because there are many Christmas and New Year Eve where we've partied together with him on in Goa. And uh, so from a student to partying with you to archiving your work is great Germany. Um, uh, Raul, I think you, uh, you described him brilliantly. Even he is wondering whether he really taught that well as, as the way you put it. But anyway, that's what your speech was, that's what Germany is. I'll give you a little rundown on what we've been doing at the archives. Um, it started a uh, little over two years back. Um, we, for about a year, we kind of sort of tried to get our act together. But uh, I'll just give you a few things that we've done in our collections. Uh, we've got this huge, uh, the documentation tradition at SEPT archive, we've got the SEPT repository, we've got Malika Sarabhai's Natrani collection of photographs of when it was being built, uh, we've got um, works of Hema Sankalya and Praveena Mehta, Arvind Talati, Earl Kessler, uh, we've got uh, the, one of the first uh, subscriptions of the Charles Korea digital uh, collection in our archives. And uh, more recently, we've done, uh, yes, of course, Germany is going to come into the archives. Leo Pereira, he's also getting work into the archives. And uh, more recently, we have been working on the collections of Bruno Dias and Sato. Both of them are 90 year plus architects in Goa. And uh, that's something that we are working on. We've already got works of, some works of both of these architects. Then we've done a lot of oral histories. We've done. Uh, 14 till a week back and now we are at 16 and we've got oral histories of Jamna Das Patel, uh, Bernard Korn, uh, Gautam Bhatia, Sheila Nath, Prabhakar Bhagwat, Surendra Patel uh, who is the planner and Surendra Patel who is the architect, Hasmuk Patel, Akhtar Chauhan, Kesha Verma, uh, Bivi Doshi, Arvind Talati, Kamu Ayer, Gajendra uh, Upadhyay and last, uh, I was in Goa last week where we did the first sessions with, uh, several sessions rather, with uh, Sato and uh, Bruno. Um, 
and uh, we are working on other collections. One of uh, the key things that we've started recently, which is actually uh, a great initiative, which is the uh, Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation and their city engineering re records. Uh, we've started managing to meet them, making a list of all that they have. That would be a great treasure to have in some form in the archives. Uh, we've already had um, three exhibitions. Our first exhibition was part of the ICO Fort, which was held at the IHC in Delhi, where we put up whatever we had on uh, forts of India. Uh, our second exhibition was actually our first inaugural exhibition last August, where we put on display all the documentation tradition that has occurred in SEPT over the last 50 years. This is our third exhibition and we've got two more on the line. One is that of Leo Pereira's and one will be that of Arvind Talati. Uh, sooner or later we'll have these two exhibitions as well. Uh, we have our website uh, which we've been working on since, extra, uh, since a fair amount of time. But we've done a sample of uh, putting on about 237 drawings and 10 projects on it as a sample and we are hoping that it should be online very soon. Uh, we have a lot of media coverage on the Facebook and in print and all uh, other kinds of um, media formats. Uh, just to summarize what we have in our material in the archives, um, we've got about, currently, we've got about 2,000 photographic prints, about 78 sets of negatives, uh, enough contact sheets. We've got about a thousand digitally procured uh, drawings that we have in our collection where we don't have the originals. Uh, we've got about 2,200 slides, 275 reports and documents, around 9,000 drawings and sketches as of date. Uh, we've got 177 artworks. 32 models as of now. Germany, I hope some of your models will also come to the archives so that you can add another dozen more. Um, and we, uh, we've got now 16 oral histories uh, which are in uh, about 40 sessions ranging from 2 hours to 16 hours. All this work that we have is in various stages of uh, the archival methodology from which we put, uh, put it through. Everything will be available on the net whether it's drawings, whether it's oral histories, whether it's slides, eventually that's what we have decided to do that instead of a lot of archives having a lot of things in their drawers, we will of course preserve all the originals, but everything that we have will be available to the student, the researcher, the scholar for free, which are the low-res website, uh, low-res images, otherwise there may be a small token amount of payment to be made. Uh, so totally, as of today, we have about 8 terabytes of digital material of what the archives can boast of today. And I think um, in, in one year, uh, it's not been, I mean, it's been a great achievement. I think it's fantastic that FAAA and, and SEPT archives have gotten together to do this show. And uh, I would end there. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Krishu. May I now request Professor Rahul Mehrotra to formally open the exhibition and invite all of you to join for the first tour and some of the others to join for refreshments at the rear courtyard of the archives. Thank you all. With this we end today's program. Thank you. Good night.